Your time is your life, and much like ice, it is constantly melting away. Do not let time go to waste. Know that time should not be without structure. You must order your day and night, organizing your routine of worship and assigning an activity to each period. This is a method for constant remembrance of God, a necessary ingredient in attaining spiritual happiness. Try to awake from sleep before dawn, a noble time, and let the first words in your heart and on your tongue be the remembrance of God. Purify your body and get dressed appropriately with the intention of obeying God. Pray in your home, then make your way to the mosque in tranquility and with remembrance of God. Pray with the congregation, which is twenty-seven times better than a prayer alone. Do not fail to complete this profitable act, for if you are negligent, then what benefit is there for you in the pursuit of knowledge? After all, the fruit of knowledge is in acting upon it. Use your time until sunrise in four types of remembrance, supplication, glorification, recitation, and reflection. Reflect upon your mistakes and the nearness of your end, and carefully plan your day with the intention of obeying God. By the light of day, you should strive to occupy yourself with what benefits you in the hereafter. Use your time in one of four ways. The first is seeking useful knowledge. This is the best use of time and highest form of worship. Useful knowledge increases your God-consciousness. If you are unable to acquire useful knowledge, use your time in extra prayers or one of the four types of remembrance mentioned. The third use of time is to act in a way that will bring happiness to the hearts of believers or make it easier for the righteous to accomplish good works, such as visiting the sick and feeding the poor. Finally, spending your time earning an honest living. To take care of yourself and your family is also a form of worship. However, beware of worldly greed, for it will ruin your religion. When the sun turns red, try and spend your time glorifying God. The sun should set while you are seeking forgiveness. One must also set aside time for worldly necessities, family and community. Before you sleep, review your knowledge. Do not end your day in entertainment, for actions are according to the last of them. Know that sleep is like death and waking is like resurrection. Be ready to meet God by sleeping in a state of purity with your will. Psychology works. And if, if there was a Muslim psychologist like no other, it's Imam Ghazali. I give you one selection, you know, from the Bidayatul Hidayah. From, he starts off by speaking about organizing your day, the hours of your day. He says you should not have anything that is, you, you, sh you should make sure that every moment of yours is accounted for. And all your activities are murattab and organized according to your timetable. And you should never... Uh, you, 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 should, you should never overcome that time and do something else in that time. You should keep it as particular as possible. And then he says, وَبِهِ تَظْهَرُ بَرَكَةُ الْأَوْقَاتِ That is how you get barakah in time. Many of us are struggling with barakah in time and blessing in time. Our days just fly by. Our days just pass and we don't get anything accomplished. So he tells us that if you have your day organized, where you do everything in its allotted time, and he says, this is what he then says, he says, don't be like animals who do things as they come, كَيْفَ matafak, Right? As they come along, they do it. So this comes along, okay, let me take care of this. Oh, that looks green, let's go there. That, that looks nice and fancy, let's, let's do that. Have a time for everything. And then after that, on another dis uh, in another discussion, he says that you should always strive to, do, to be doing good and never to be doing bad. Right? So you should always be a person of benefit and not a person of harm or inconvenience to others. And then he says in the midst of that discussion, he says that, look, if you can't help it, now because there's going to be a lot of people and, you know, when you've dealt with a lot of people, they, they, they come and the excuse is, you know, I can't help it. I just can't help talking to him. I can't help talking to her. I can't help bothering him. I can't help lying. I can't help, uh, you know, cheating. So he says, look, if you can't help it, if that's what you say, so he's preempting your thoughts. That's why I call him a great psychologist. So he says that if you can't help it, then go to sleep. He says, why? Because sleep is a neutral state. Neither do you benefit and neither will you harm anybody. It's a neutral state. 
Now, again, look at where his mind is. What, where his mind is. There's going to be many people even now thinking, man, that's a good fatwa. <laughs> right? I'll go to sleep. So then he suddenly says, he says, but then sleep is the sister of death. And what good is there in life in which so much part of it is death? So then he jerks you back to reality. So essentially, coming back with the argument that the only way is to be good and not to do anything bad. Because even sleep is not a good idea. I just find him that he just talks to your heart, he just gets right to the bottom of things. He doesn't beat around the bush, he keeps it, gives it straight. محمد سيد الكونين والثقلين والفريقين